Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to talk about tying hands. Normally we think it's in our own best interest to keep our options open and not make a decision until the last possible moment to do so. And today I'm going to show that given certain conditions that that might not be the case. And to do that I'm going to use a story that is most commonly attributed to Thomas Schelling, but I think it's really old as, as old as history itself. And I'm going to use this diagram to explain things. So we have two countries, country one and country two, and an island that's uninhabited between them. And there's some sort of conflict that erupts between country one and country two, and so they want to control this island. And this island itself isn't very valuable. It isn't worth actually fighting over. So the worst possible outcome for these two countries both is for them to fight over it. If they actually engage in some sort of battle for the island, well, that's kind of silly. Either country would have just been better off letting the other country take over the island. But the island itself is still valuable, so country one's ideal outcome is for it to control the island, and country two's preferred out most preferred outcome is for country two to control the island. And I've drawn in a couple of bridges for each country to have access to the island. Now, it's the only access that each country has to the island is, is through this bridge. And so the game is going to begin with country one crossing that bridge to the island and sort of setting up shop there. Now, after that, they have this decision that we're going to draw up into this game tree right here. Country one can either burn the bridge that they just crossed or not burn that bridge. And then following that decision, country two will see what has happened and then decide either to attack or to concede control of the island. If country two attacks and one did not burn the bridge at the beginning of the game, then one has this option whether to fight over the bridge, or sorry, fight over the island or retreat. And you notice that if country two attacks over here, that country one no longer has this option to fight or to retreat because, well, they've burned their bridge, they can't retreat anymore, it's physically impossible, and so they just have to fight. Now, we know how to solve these sorts of games because we've been working with extensive form for a long time now. This is a candidate of backward induction, and so we can start at either end of the game tree. We're just going to start with the right side because it's a little bit bigger and we'll get that out of the way first. So we start at the very end, and we assume that Country 1 began the game by not burning and that Country 2 then attacked. And given that, what would Country 1 want to do? Well, we compare these two payoffs, we see that fighting is worth 1, retreating is worth 2. This is the idea that fighting over the island just isn't worth it and it's better to give up control than to actually fight over it. So if Country 1 were ever in this situation, it would retreat from the island. Now we move up a step knowing that Country 1 will retreat. And we see that, well, given that, Country 2 would prefer attacking over conceding control over the island. The reason is that if Country 2 attacks, then Country 1 retreats, and Country 2 gets three points of utility, which is better than if they conceded and only got two. So we know that if we get onto this right side of the game tree, we're going to see this. We're going to see Country 2 attack and then Country 1 retreat. So now let's look at the other side of the game tree, and this one is very short because it's only one decision. So country two can either attack or concede after country one has burned their bridge. And we see that if country two attacks, it gets one point of utility, and that's not as good as it if it conceded and got in two points of utility. So if we're ever on this side of the game tree, well, country two will concede. So given these two pieces of information, it's now time for country one to decide whether to burn or to not burn. And we isolate these two payoffs right here this one and this one, and we see that, well, burning is in country one's best interest. The reason is that if it burns, country two will concede, it will get three points of utility. The alternative is to not burn, which leads country two to attack, and then country one retreats, and country one only gets two points of utility for that outcome. And so the solution for this game is for country one to burn and for country two to concede. That's what happens in an equilibrium, I should say. Now, let's apply this logic to what we talked about earlier. I said at the beginning of the video that we think normally that it's in our best interest to wait until the last possible moment to make a decision, but here that's not the case. Here, well, country one could not burn the bridge, and that actually allows them to delay this decision whether or not to actually fight over the bridge. Or sorry, to fight over the island. If they burn the bridge, then they have to fight over the island. There is no choice. Here, they still have this choice. They can either fight or retreat. But the common theme of these extensive form games, of course, is that we want to make credible threats. We want to be able to make credible threats. And what we see in this game is that if Country 1 does not burn the bridge, it cannot make a credible threat to fight over the, fi or fight over the island. 
And the reason, of course, is that this island isn't very valuable, and it's just better to uh, give it to the other country than to fight over it. That's what we see down here in this. Now, what country one might want to do is to be able to credibly threaten to country two that, well, if you do attack country two, I'm going to fight over this island. And the reason for that is because that would give country one its best outcome. It would actually get control over the island by having country two concede because country two doesn't want to end up in this bad fight outcome either. The problem, of course, is that player one just can't credibly commit to this because everyone knows that given the choice between fighting over the island and retreating, country one will retreat. And so the dilemma really becomes for country one to somehow make this threat to fight credible. And they can't do this over here on this side of the game tree, but they can by burning their bridge. Once that bridge is gone, they literally can't retreat anymore. So they have to fight. And so this threat to fight has become credible. Country two now knows that country one has to fight over the island because they have no choice. And so knowing that this threat is credible and knowing that country one will now fight, well, it's now in country two's best interest to concede rather than attack that island. And so by being clever, by tying country one's own hands, by burning that bridge, country one can actually achieve a better outcome. And so that's this idea of tying hands, and it's a very important concept, and we'll see this coming up again and again. So I hope you understood the lesson that came out of this video.